All right, so today's segment is, well, actually be one of many segments on the topic of finance. If you're like me, I mean, I think romance and finance seem to be sometimes at least my biggest challenges in life that I've learned and or have been taught uh, the biggest lessons. So with that said, a little bit on finance and some of the things that I've learned once again from others. Um, first and foremost, it's it's looking at finance and, and making money is not, for some reason, society, it's almost like taboo to talk about. You know, it's almost like we have to show these extreme um, characteristics or values of humility around money and how it's not important or we don't value it. I don't know, maybe that's just my perception or at least that's what I was brought up believing where wealthy people, as far as how my mom viewed them, they were like, you know, I don't know, there was something wrong about it. You know, if they drove a nice car, I remember with my mom as a young kid, would like scoff at them. Oh, I can't believe they're driving that. You know, that's just disgusting. And so as a kid, I had this like perception of those with money is like, you know, they're just, I don't know, portrayed to me as bad. In fact, even 90% of the movies and TV shows that we watch today, you know, it's the bad rich guy, you know, he's like you know, the man and trying to squash everyone else. And, you know, just once again, that's my perception, but I've changed my perception. You know, I was brought up as a kid, as we, most of us usually are, with kind of picking up and adopting the ideas and beliefs of our parents. And, you know, I watched my parents and I watched, you know, my father at one time, you know, had found some financial success and then lost everything. And then I also saw my mom, for whatever reason, you know, challenged with finances her entire life and also enrolled me and my brother sort of in these limiting beliefs and or looking at those that had financial wealth as kind of like the bad guys. And as a little kid, I took that in and, and it was like that became an internal belief that those with financial success was A, it was for those rich people, you know, oh, those in my days back in the 80s, it was the preppies, you know, oh, those preps, you know, they're so full of themselves, you know, wearing all those labeled brand clothes. And, you know, I was just like, I was almost proud that I was kind of on the wrong side of the tracks, you know, that I was like kind of this poor kid and created an identity around that. And as I grew up and started wanting things, usually pursued by wanting to take girls out on dates, <laughs> have a couple bucks to do so, I started having this drive that I wanted to, well, wait a second, I don't really like being poor. I don't like having no money. This sucks, I'm stressed. I'm struggling. I'm really envious of looking at all those other people do things that I kind of want to do. Like, but I don't deserve it or it's wrong. And I had to break that belief. And that's the biggest message here with this video is break that belief. I'm a strong believer and viewers don't need to be in God in a loving God and a universe, law of attraction, all the above. I'm very much of a new age thinker. And I believe God wants us to have abundance. From what I understand, the Bible talks about it, like that to have us become the best versions of ourself. And that includes, for me, you know, I like finances. I like having security of money. It makes me feel good. I like providing for my kids. I like providing for my wife. I like donating money to charity. I like supporting others. I like being, you know, helping hand to other people. That feels good and that does come with money. I, I heard a great, one of my great coaches, Mike Ferry, my real estate coach say to me, he says, life's tough, it's tougher without money. <laughs> you know, And it's funny, it, you know, it is. It's, you know, we can uh, create so many things for ourselves and our loved ones if we are able to achieve some financial success and it doesn't have to be taboo. Once again, I had to shatter that perception that it couldn't be something for me. I could go out there and achieve. And I learned this, by the way, from others. You know, there was a number of great books that I, that I read around money, and I still do. Uh, but the first book that I got around money, as many have read, it's the iconic Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It's a masterpiece. It's a must. You have, I mean, that's like everyone, 
I think almost every successful person has started off with that self-help book on finance. So Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Another book that was given to me because I was just starting off in sales was called The Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino. And it's phenomenal. It had you read these scrolls three times a day. And scroll one was about working hard, about being the first guy in the office and the last guy to leave, to put in the work, to put in the action, and to help others, by the way, to be of service, to come from a place in your heart to help others. I'm speaking maybe more direct to that salesperson, viewer that's watching, but it doesn't matter if you're in sales or not. It's about of believing in yourself, putting in the action, not just, you know, I don't just wait around and wait for money to come, you know, the law of attraction. It's about putting in that action steps to create it. And one of the things, and there's so much around this topic of finance that I'll go into in many of these uh, different segments, you know, on different days. But one of the things that Og Mandino suggested was write down a dollar amount, a goal that you hope that you want to earn per year and make it uncomfortable. Write down such a big number that you're just like, oh my God, if that were to happen, like my mind would be blown. There's no way that'll happen, but if it did, what would that dollar amount be? And I remember, my favorite number is eight. And I remember writing down 88,000 a year. If I made 88,000 a year, oh my God. At the time, I was living in a one bedroom apartment in Venice Beach, California. And there's three of us, my girlfriend, Monica, and I forget our roommate's name. And we actually literally had a sheet that divided up the living room um, for us to share our space. Our roommate had the bedroom. Our living room, half the living room was our bedroom where we had our mattress on the floor. Our total rent was $895 per month and I could barely afford my third of that rent. So the idea of making $88,000 a year was like, that's for those rich people. I'll never be able to accomplish that. But you know what? I'm going to take on this challenge. I'm going to read these scrolls every single day by Og Mandino. I'm going to chant them. I'm going to just ingrain them in me that, who knows, maybe this, this might work. Well, <clears throat> fast forward years later, I pulled that book out amongst my whole library of books that I've read. And I opened up that passage in the back where it said, write down a dollar amount. And I looked at it and I choked up and got chills. I was like, oh my God, I make this per month. Like, the, my mind blew, like, how this stuff works. This crazy stuff that we hear, this crazy stuff that I'm spewing, that I've learned from others, there's sometimes something magical around this stuff that we learn from other people as far as how to create the life of our dreams. So it's not just what I'm trying to teach you. Listen to the others, like the great mentors that are out there, you know, the, again, on, on money or, or spirituality or whatever it is that you want to achieve in your life. Follow the path that others have given us and do those exercises. There's something magical around it. Do those affirmations. And also, as Mog Mandino talked about, put in the action, put in the work. Be the guy that's willing to do what others won't in, other to, in order to achieve what others won't. And I think that was from Mike Ferry that I learned that. Do what others won't to achieve what others won't. Put in the hours, work hard diligently, and then you come to a place that you just look at your life and go, oh my God, like that talking head song, like how did I get here? How did this happen? But it did. One last thing I'll leave you with as far as a book, another book that I read called The Richest Man in Babylon. And just the footnote version of the book was, create the whole, the whole moral of the story was, create enough gold in your purse or in your pocket, create a savings account, whatever that is. Start creating money that you don't have to go out and spend. You know, be a little frugal. I, would, I sometimes still am frugal, but I was insanely frugal at the beginning of trying to build wealth. And I watched every penny that I spent, you know, as my accountant says, you know, watch the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves. So with this book, Richest Man in Babylon, start accumulating any amount of money that you can and save it. Put money aside. 
because you start, that money starts building upon itself. You start feeling confident in the world. You start feeling like, you know, like silly, but I can see you know, whatever car drive on the road. And I go, you know what? If I wanted to, I could buy that Ferrari. I could buy that Lamborghini. I could buy whatever that car is. And I remember my wife and I were walking and we had a place in Fiji and I was looking at all these yachts and I'm like, God, that'd be so cool to own one of those yachts. And she's like, babe, you can afford one. And I went, oh my God, that's right. I can, but I'm, I'm not going to buy a boat. But it's that feeling of wealth that starts attracting more wealth. And that comes from a feeling of security. So start building small pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, dollars, start building up some, some financial security. You're gonna feel great about yourself. You're gonna feel confident. It's gonna make you walk taller and stronger. And then shockingly, it's like magic. You start attracting more wealth into your life. So I hope that this, this segment was informative. Now, guys, clearly finance is a big topic. I mean, there's a lot of big topics against romance and finance spirituality, health, etc. So I can't knock it out of the park all in a 10 minute segment. <laughs> There's so much around this topic that I plan to go into depth. Uh, there's so many things around accumulating money that I plan on, you know, addressing in future segments. So stay tuned for those. I really do believe I'll be able to share some good information for you, uh, which I guess would perhaps entice you to subscribe to the channel or do whatever you need to do to make sure that you see future segments on the topic. All right, thanks for watching, have a great day.